Welcome to Gaming News, my name is Diego Cárdenas and I will be your host today. Gaming News is a space where we talk about all the news of gaming of the past week, including new games or any type of announcement that the big companies are giving out. So let's stop the chattering and get right on to it. So, first of all, the first news is that Nintendo just released a new trailer for a game, for a new IP. This new game is called Game Builders Garage. The premise of this game is to create our own games, literally. So, when we are playing, we are going to connect what we do with the control and what we want our character to do, creating levels and games. We can add obstacles, textures, and all sorts of things. This type of game promises to be a game where the only limit is our imagination and we will have tons and tons of hours of fun. This new game releases June 11th, 2021, exclusively on Nintendo Switch. So, about new releases, the most important release of the past week was Resident Evil 8, or also known as Resident Evil Village. Can someone please tell me what the hell is going on here? No, the place is full of nothing but blood and death. <laughs> that is a sequel and happens some years after the last Resident Evil, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, where we will be exploring both the village and a haunted castle by monsters. This promises to be a frightening and fun experience from Capcom. It had an 85 from Metacritic, so we hope everyone that bought the game is enjoying it and don't forget to look out for our review later this week. Uh, other releases from this week include The Colonists for all consoles, Metro Exodus for all consoles, Non Guns, Doppelganger Editions for PC only, and Skate City for all consoles as well. So, to finish it up, we have great news actually. They are regarding the E3. As you may know, the E3 is the biggest and most important gaming event of the year. We already have confirmed that we will have an event this year after last year's cancellation due to the pandemic. So what are the great news? Well, more companies have confirmed their assistance to the event. The most notable of which are Sega, Square Enix and Bandai Namco. They are coming to this event alongside other big companies that already confirmed their presence in the past as Nintendo and Xbox. We are looking forward for this event and we hope that you are too. Thank you for joining me in this game news. My name is Diego Cardenas and I hope you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow at the same hour in the same channel. The government has told us, society has told us, teachers have told us, our own parents have told us, video games causes violence especially in very young children. But is it actually true? Is it actually true that a simple mobile game or a PC game can cause somebody to commit a horrific crime? Well, in this video, we're going to analyze just that. According to the Pew Research Center, a, what I call an independent think tank in Washington, United States, in 2018, 97% of youth aged 12 to 17 have played a variety of video games and two-thirds of those youths have played any violent game. You know, the ones that involve shooting, stabbing somebody, hitting the cops, maybe running over pedestrians, all that. Also found out by this 
Pew Research Center, it has said that boys tend to play these violent beer games more than girls. You know, as they say, boys will be boys. A separate research has found out that half of the video games rated by the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board, you know, the ones that, these ones right here, the ones that you possibly have seen in like trailers, contain violence. And 90% of those are rated to be, um, you know, neat and ideal for children on under the age of 10 to older. Research public policy makers and the general society or the general public have agreed that there are two factors of video games. One, that video games present themselves to be educational and you know, can teach us new things, can teach us about history, but it can also contain a bit more graphic details of violence more than cinemas or TV shows or comics in general. Second and final factor is that ultra violent video games started to appear in, 19, in the 1990s, meaning that more children were having more access to this and basically video games had a bit more liberty than cinema, television, comic books were before and so they were free to like make as graphic as they can be the video games. We can thank Albert Bandura for trying out this theory about that children are influenced by violence and can cause them to be aggressive with his very famous experiment called the bubble doll experiment he separated them in two areas in one area both the boys and the girls were watching as an adult was kindly tenderly and you know caressing the bubble doll that was the main thing of the experiment the bubble doll and in the other side, in the other room, children were standing there to watch an adult beat up with a hammer or their own fist or throw it across the room with a bubble doll. And the results were like this. Basically, uh, that the children that have watched the adult kindly care for the bubble doll acted the same way as they have son seen the adult do. And the children that saw that the adult, the adult, the adult beating up and punching the bobo doll they acted the same way this comes with the conclusion that for certain that kids can be influenced by what they see and what they and what they observe what they hear from adults or any kind of the media so we can surely say that from all of this that we have talked about in this video that video games in younger children can sincerely cause them to be a bit more aggressive like punching, kicking, dreads, you get the point but for sure we can surely, we can surely point out that video games definitely does not cause a child to grow up and be a murderer, a serial killer, a shooter or anything else that's just something more deeper than that just than simply just scapegoating the video games like the government has done as well as the society so just chill there's more than that for sure hello and welcome to our tv show player one in this section we are going to talk about evolution of video games what is about well we are going to explain here right now First, we start in 1940, where the first video game arrives. The creator of this video game is Edward U. Condon. The first debut was in the World's Fair of New York, where a computer that loves to play video games like NIM, NIM is a game of possibilities, against a human competitor, where the computer one ninety percent of the times that is incredible also they developed that computer in that time then in 1967 it arrives a new video game that is called punk punk is a game of uh, gender sports uh, the creator is alan alcorn 
Alcon uh, while he was working for Atari. Uh, the mode of this game was a uh, single player and multiplayer. Uh, this video game was a success in the video game industry and due to this su success in the video game industry several companies start to produce this game and now Pong is part of our popular culture then the video games meet the television and the responsible for this action was Ralph Baer. Ralph Baer created a prototype of a console of video games that allowed users to play video games on TV screen. Imagine that, in that time, playing video games on the screen. It's crazy, right? In 1989, the nemesis of NES was created and it's called Sega Genesis. This company developed a new character that would bring the older gamers. This character is very popular and famous, like Mario Bros. And it's called Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic is a mature uh, character than his counterpart Mario and in 1992 and 1993 in the video games the blood was the spotlight these games these fighting games and shooters like Mortal Kombat and Doom hit on the market but also in that period of time they create the company that uh, is the entertainment software rating based that it is dedicated to rate the video games if they have appropriate content for for the users and then the PC games the PC games were more accessible and cheaper and well in that period they create the, the concept master race that they use nowadays all the video games went online. At the beginning of the century, the internet wasn't the fastest and, no, and not everyone could afford the internet payment. So the gamers started creating something called LAN parties, where they bring his own computer, his own console, and connect all the local network to play against or with each other. With the increase of the use of the internet, the boom of the consoles and the new technologies, the games start to go online via internet. One of the first games that use this is World of Warcraft, Counter Strike, etc. So nowadays, the online multiplayer cooperative, however it's called, is a must have in almost every game. In not including the history games, the single player games, and some things like that. They play anywhere nowadays. With the advance in technology and in different and evolution of the cell phones, almost every person has now a smartphone. And we carry with them we carry them to every place we go, even at the bathroom. And so video games and entertainment apps start to, to grow in. One of the most important video games apps that released in 2010 was Angry Birds Together with Farmville and Dragon City Were games that everyone could know how to play, could learn because they are really basic games um, Millions of people were playing these games Even the persons that never could concern himself as a gamer start to playing so another example of this was the pokemon go explosion in 2016 where the pokemon company released pokemon go a free-to-play game for the smartphones that let you capture pokemons or search them in all your city using their your phone as the as the capture for method so this game game explode 
every person in the world start playing it and this brings some bad consequences because a lot of people were having accidents at the streets even even deaths because because they only was seeing the his cell phones looking for these monsters so we need to to think about it and measure us and in 2017 nintendo released the nintendo switch a console that is a lot less powerful than the consoles nowadays but his unique characteristic was that you can carry it anywhere you want play with your friends connect to a tv well this console is nowadays a beast seller the battle royale explosion in 2017 with the release of the boogie player who knows background the genre battle royale start to grow that is based in a mod of Daisira that put you or your team in a map of Iceland against over 99 people. The popularity of this genre starts to grow up. This with the help of YouTube, content creators and Twitch TV. That is a platform where you can stream these games in real time, get donations, talk to your watchers, etc. Also, a uh, time later, the game Fortnite was released and the popularity blow all the internet with more of 50 million players nowadays the game has achieved a lot of collaborations innovation and things that never a game do before with the popularization with the popularity of this game a lot of new battle royals start to appear like apex legends hyperscape spellbreak etc even if they have greater innovations or new game game modes, uh, they don't become as successful as Fortnite. We don't know how the games will evolve, what new game release will change the world of the gaming, but stay tuned to our program Player One. Today we are going to present a game that the, the, from the last years has been rising up as being one of the best games of this decade and uh, just we are talking about Hollow Knight Hollow Knight is a game made by a group of people named Team Cherry. They started the developing in 2016, but they finished it around 2017 with a Kickstarter foundation. And this game has been so popular and so accommodated by critics and fans all around the world. A really amazing job that you can do. This game, Hollow Knight, is a 2D platformer metroidvania, but don't let the name scare you because it's actually a game that is accessible for all types of people. And maybe it's good for all the ones that want to introduce to the gender. Uh, let me tell you that all the games, all the mechanics are so simplified that you don't really need any other experience of gaming or in the genre before. This game is about exploration and all the time you will go around the hollow nest, finding new things, objects, fighting enemies, exploring, solving puzzles. And the mechanics of the game make it so satisfying that you want and want and want to play. It's so addictive and so intuitive. Now for one minute suggesting that this is a game that can offer you more than 100 of hours of pure gameplay and it's ridiculous the price it has because it is about six dollars so it's ridiculous the amount of things you get and the price you pay so it's a big offer that you cannot let pass uh, Hollow Knight is available in all platforms and 
I really recommend this game. It has our improvement and hope you enjoy it. So let's keep playing. 